Hi, and welcome back to This Bites For You. Of course, you may already know that This Bites For You is a PC tech channel, everything PC here. So when AOLion reached out to me saying, hey Iggy, we'd love for you to review our Nintendo Switch controller. I'm like, you guys have never checked out my channel. PC, period. They're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, we've checked out your channel, but this works for the Switch and the PC. I got both. So I figured, well, let's go ahead and do it. You're a gamer too, just like me. So best of both worlds, the Switch and the PC. Why not, right? So in this video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, and then a review of the AO Lion Nintendo Switch Bluetooth controller. A little bit more than that. But anyway, come over here real quick. Let's get started with the unboxing and get to some testing. All right, so here we are again. The AOLion PGNS2028 controller. PG right over here, see the model number. And then durable gaming and buttons, easy connection. Bunch of the stuff there. And then some more good stuff back here. Okay, oddly enough, doesn't open up very well with a knife. <laughs> All right, so first off, comes with the product specifications. Just basic, real tiny information on what you find in here. Then we have a cable. Looks like a USB-A to a USB-C cable. See that? USB-C and a USB 2.0 A connector. This is, it's real short, about three feet. I'll put the exact measurements right down here. And then we have the controller itself. It feels real light. It's got some plastic over here. That wasn't bad. Now we have their line logo right over here. Now the controller feels, it feels pretty nice in your hands. NSL wireless controller, you can see that right down here. Okay, so we have L, 2L, R, 2R, there is the USB Type-C connector, and that looks like a Bluetooth pairing button, but we'll find out soon enough. Then we have these two right over here, as well as over here. Home, then a T, bunch of different buttons here. X, A, Y, B. It feels pretty, oh, and it looks like it's already started, so. This has a six axis gyroscope chip in the handle, fine tuning and auxiliary, fine aiming, fast and accurate target, they state. Now the turbo button allows for quick bursts. So we'll test that out in a minute. It also has dual motor vibration design, three gear adjustments and feedback vibration effects according to the game. As we already saw, it has a one touch wake up. Press that, home, and then we could see it start to turn on. It wakes up the host when the switch is in standby. This has a 500 milliamp rechargeable lithium ion battery. The battery life is between eight and 10 hours and it takes three hours to charge. It looks like they sent it to me with a charge already, which is great. All right, so let's get started with this real quick. As a standard Nintendo Switch connected to a TV, that's gonna work as intended, no problem. Now, in order to, from what I understand, at least the first time to get this, this controller to work, you need to connect the USB cable to the back of here, maybe just for the first time, into the USB port. Okay, and then this guy right up here shows a little orange light and then it showed paired up there on the screen for a split second. 
Now, is that paired? Oh, now I hit home. See the little Knight Rider light? And then it showed that it connected down here. So now, okay. And also, I felt a rumble. At this point, I should be able to take that off. Okay. And it's paired. So now, I think we have in here... Yeah, we have... So, do an update, of course. One sec. So let's get out of here. Let's go into this real quick. And now that it's the only one connected, we can see right over here. LNR, we're good. And I'm not going to play a real game. Just want to do a quick one to show you guys how it works or if it works well. Okay, right now, seems to work well. Okay, as I, you might have heard already, it's vibrating, which is nice. So it feels like a regular pro, yeah, and it vibrates nicely. Feels like a regular pro, pro controller. So. So you can hear it vibrating, it vibrates nicely. The controls feel great. I like the way it fits in my hand. Okay, and it also has where you push these down and they act as a button. It doesn't have a use in this game. Oh, look at that. What is that? So I haven't played this game yet. As I'm sure you can tell but so it's cool that these are also controllers and or not controllers but buttons oh no 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 ah. so it feels great everything feels natural about it mind you I haven't played this game before but you know Mario game is a Mario game you are also able to control the intensity of the vibration, which is pretty cool. You do that by holding down the T button. That's pretty cool. And then raising or lowering here. Let me hold that next to the microphone. Okay, and then down. So it looks like there's three steps off, middle, it's kind of just a low rumble, and then high, and then higher. So four steps. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now for turbo. All right, let's see what function we can put turbo. So. If I hold down T and Y, Y is now turboed. So easy programmable buttons there. So that works pretty well. So let's go see how it works on a PC. Consoles are cool and everything, but I'm a PC guy myself. And in my opinion, you just can't play every single game on the PC with a controller. I'm a keyboard and mouse kind of guy. Now I cannot play an FPS to save my life with a controller, but games like Shadow the Tomb Raider and Grand Theft Auto and a bunch of others, Flight Sims even, are awesome with controllers. So let me show you real quick. One thing before we go there, just make sure you have either Bluetooth on your computer or you'd have to use a USB cable. Not a big deal. It brings the cable. It's a short cable, but it brings a cable. You'd have to have your own USB adapter for the computer. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below. So let's start this real quick. We're going to go ahead on the notification area down here, open up Bluetooth and click add Bluetooth device. And then we'll click here, add Bluetooth or other device. Then we'll click Bluetooth. So here we're going to press and hold this button up here for a few seconds. 
And then we'll see this little guy appear. This is letting, letting us know, hey, searching for a Bluetooth device. And you might have to scroll down. There we go. Down here, Pro Controller, Connecting. As soon as you see the single one light up right there, bing, bing. There we go. We are connected. Setting up a device now. Then we can always just click here. Or if we want to configure it, just go to set up a game controller. And then over here, we can, if we have others, or if we want to configure it. Now, originally, and actually right now, you see when I hold down, it goes up. And when I hold up, it goes down. So you're going to have to remember that for certain games and certain clients. Like Steam, for example. The first time I hit Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it was, you know, just as it is, down, I looked up, up, I looked down. Some people are cool with that. I don't like to invert it. So I had to select a game, then click Manage, then go to Properties, go to Controller, you notice here, we have selected the T Nintendo Switch controller. I had to come down here, the drop down, and choose Enable Steam Input. That added it over here. That's all I needed to do. So then, let's go ahead and start up Tomb Raider real quick. All right, so when we're in the game, just go ahead and click Load. We'll go ahead and the controller's working now at this point. And again, down is down and up is up because I made that steam adjustment. So just know that in some games, you will need to do that. All right, so then, like any FPS, or any Shadow of the Tomb Raider or third person game like this, you know, the there's nothing different about it. Hydraulics. And X, so Y, X, B, and A, like you're used to. Mind you, you can remap everything. Maybe we can lift it with those counterweights. And there goes the vibration. I bet this water is drinkable. Because <laughs> of the water down here. Nice the way that works. Let's go ahead and try Grand Theft Auto real quick. Now, there are a few limitations on the Switch side, not so much on this side. So while there is integration into Steam, you saw the way that I made that work in Steam. On other gaming clients as Rockstar's client, it's not so easy. They'll let the Xbox controller work because Xbox is Microsoft, so is Windows. But there are ways around it. Let me show you how real quick, and I'm not going to go real in depth into it, but if you want to learn more about it, just let me know. If I have enough people asking for it, I'll make a video on it. All right, so as I've already shown you before, we can see it over here in the game controllers, but for the Rockstar client, that's not enough. We have to virtualize it. So with this guy here, we're gonna go ahead and download the Toka Edit or the X360CE software. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below. And then we need to configure it. We need to go ahead and map all the keys and everything. And it is a little bit difficult. It's not impossible. But, you know, after you've mapped it, you've configured it and everything, now we can go ahead and load up Grand Theft Auto V. I need to remap the keys a little bit better than I have already. Damn. It's not 100% perfect. Whoa, whoa, I didn't mean to... Yeah. Poor kitty, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, whoops. So it's not 100% perfect mapped. Which one you want? But, uh, you know, and I'll go ahead and bleep out all the curse words, but you can see everything works perfectly well. Right up here, homie. I'm about to go nice and slow for you. Come on. Hey, remember we gotta be so, careful with these rides, homie. Remember again, this is for the switch. This particular one, but as long as you map the controls, it works perfectly fine. Just know, you know, they didn't make it to play anything else other than the Switch. But it will work, of course, because of that emulation software. Not made by them, but I just want to make sure that, you know, you understand about that. 
if you want to chump them things. Up here, through the studio. Let's show these movie people how we do. So. And I'm sorry, I'll tell you boy. Send me about this shit. Down this dirty motherfucker. Keep up, homie. I honestly didn't expect too much from it. That was kind of dumb of me. It's actually a pretty amazing controller. You can see here. I mean, mind you, looking at it, it's probably nothing out of this world, but it fits in your hands perfectly. It fits exactly like a Switch Pro controller does. Everything is in perfect distance. The trigger buttons up here, both of them, L1, L2, R1, R2, and then these controllers here, as well as here, and then this controller down here. These buttons as well, they're kind of out of the way. You kind of have to stretch maybe a little bit more, but not horribly and these are buttons most of the times that you're not going to be accessing while you're playing anyway the turbo feature is pretty awesome and again the fact that even though it's not made with that emulation software i'm able to go ahead and use it outside of windows so this is what it looks like along the top you can see here is where you control you connect the usb-c cable the other side is usb-a to charge and to connect to your computer of course and then that's where you're going to connect or press it to sync up with your PC. And then, sorry, it's a little bit fingerprinty, but it's going to attract that. The finish looks very nice. And you can see here, that way it's not so slippery in your hands if you sweat. The little perforations there. It is a matte black, but I think it's pretty nice looking. I definitely will keep this handy with all my all my builds right around the corner all right so you've seen me connect the aoline switch controller both through usb and through bluetooth and it works perfectly fine the battery life now you may have noticed during this entire video i've changed my shirt a few times and uh, you know each day i go to my day job so i've been doing this now for about what four or five days or something. And when I received this from wherever it came from, I had never charged it. So it's been going through the mail for however long it took. And then the days that I've been going in between playing with it and everything. So I'm pretty impressed by the battery. Now, this is supposed to be a Nintendo Switch controller compatible with the Nintendo Switch like I showed you earlier. Now, being as I mentioned before, Windows 10 from Microsoft, the Xbox controller is going to work better overall, more compatible, but because the only Xbox I have is a 360 and I don't play it anymore, I have a Switch, so this is naturally going to work better for me. Now, you may have noticed, or you, I'm sure you noticed, when I played on uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it was on Steam. I had to configure this to work within Steam. Not a big deal. In order for it to work within Grand Theft Auto, I had to use the Rockstar client, which is in no way compatible with Steam, unless you get it on Steam or plug it into Steam, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to show you outside of Steam. So I was able to use this controller with that emulation software, which I'll go ahead and link everything I've used in this video down below as well. So that makes it compatible with just about everything. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so we've gone pretty much over everything on the controller. I've shown you up nice and close. It is a nice looking controller. Again, it feels great in my hands, as I mentioned before. The battery life is great. The price is awesome. So let me know what you guys think down below. I'd love to get your feedback. So that's about it for now. Again, this is Iggy with This Bites for You, showing you the AO Lion Switch Pro Controller. Iggy out. See you guys.